Hello everyone, Chris Clamp here again and welcome back to my studio. For those of you that are new to the channel, let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Chris Clamp, I'm an oil painter and I'm a bit of an art world insider due to my 15 years working at a high-end commercial art gallery. I started this channel here on YouTube to help you all get tips and information to help you grow your fine art career. So I've been fortunate enough to have the opportunities to speak with many emerging artists as well as many art school students. And the number one question that everyone asks is, how do you price your artwork? That is a very difficult question to answer, but one that we're going to dive into today. I'm going to give you helpful information that art galleries also consider when pricing artwork to help you grow and price your artwork so you can get more sales. So grab a pen and pad. You're going to want to take notes to this one. Let's dive in. Okay, everyone, let's talk about money. That is a tough topic and something that's a little gross to some people. Some people are like, ooh, I don't wanna talk about money when I talk about art. I just wanna talk about art. And even when you're in art school, there's like a certain stigma about money where if you're looking at money and how to make a living off your artwork, it's almost like you're selling out. There's this weird thing that's there that I want to help you all just tackle and, 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 and dispel. First of all, if you're going to make a living with your artwork, which I want you all to do, then you're going to have to understand the business of art and how to comfortably make money off of it and comfortably talk about it. In art school, you will learn many things about how to make art and how to come up with conceptual ideas about what art actually is. You'll learn all sorts of things, but they don't often teach you about the business of art. And that is something that I learned in a crash course when I started working at this gallery straight out of college. I picked up a lot of helpful information. And again, on this channel, I'm going to be passing along that information to you all. Okay, so today we're talking about money. I know that that's a little uncomfortable whenever you're coming out of art school or say you're still in art school. If you're making money off your art, there's something that feels like you're selling out by doing that. But that's, that's just a terrible idea. I want to dispel that. I want you to be a successful artist off of your artwork. And the only way to do that is to actually understand the business of it and to make sales from it. And to be a professional artist, this is what you have to understand. And I have some information I want to share with you all to help you become more comfortable with handling the money side of your business so you can continue to grow and continue to sell your artwork and sustain yourself based on your paintings. To have this conversation, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start with what an art gallery does because what an art gallery does to price artwork is going to be a very similar model to how you were going to be pricing your artwork in your studio. When an art gallery prices art in their gallery, there are a couple things that have to be considered. Is the artist living? Is the artist deceased? If the artist is deceased, a lot of the rules I'm going to describe coming forward are different, okay? So a deceased artist, an artist estate that a gallery represents, the price can be a little all over the place because there's going to be themes, subject matter, and styles that an artist made in their lifetime that are going to be a bit more desired by collectors. So those are going to be priced differently I just want you to understand that artist estates is a separate thing. Price is left to a few different things like desirability and scarcity. Artist estates aside, living artists, 
a living artist's work. An art gallery is going to price a living artist's work based on size. So that is going to be determined by the square inch of the works of art and the size range that that might fit into. Let's say an artist is doing paintings that are eight inches square, eight by 10, nine by 12. Those works of art are in a very similar range. Not only can we look at that and determine that, but we can do the math. We do the math by multiplying the two sides. Eight by eight, 64. Eight by 10, 80, and such and so forth. That helps us understand the actual size of the work of art. Now the square inch is also gonna be important, but let's finish talking about range again. So the artist could work in multiple sizes, but things can be grouped together based on size ranges. What I just described, works of art were a bit more closer to a square or uh, an obvious rectangle, but an artist might do paintings that are more panoramic. And again, you can multiply the two sides to determine the square inch and that panoramic size might fit into something that's more square that we've already discussed and therefore that kind of fits into a range. The gallery is going to determine a base cost for the smallest works of art. What I just mentioned about the price range of these small works, this becomes kind of like the base level, almost an entry level point where things start at and then go up and they go up again by the square inch. A gallery will often keep a price list with them where it actually has this in a chart where these are the works of art that the artist has made and this is its square inch and these are the ranges. This is where the price is based on that square inch or that range. And then they kind of go up from there. It's good to keep things in a range. So when you're talking with a collector, you can sound a bit more confident and things just make a little more sense. It's also good because you're typically going to be working in round numbers. You don't want to be dealing in just off the wall half numbers and things like that. If something is going to be priced at $1,000, maybe something that's a little bigger might be $1,200, $1,500, $2,000. You don't want to all of a sudden be so stuck in the math of what a square inch costs and then price out the next painting and that painting is going to be $1,773 or something strange. You want it to sound like it makes sense you want it to sound consistent and there's a certain psychology to that. Okay, another thing that galleries are going to keep in mind when it prices your work of art, we've covered the price per square inch or price range. Another thing is they're going to price things based on materials. Before I dive into that, let me throw out one thing here that might blow your mind. But in the commercial art world, works on paper are priced less than a work on canvas or panel. There's a bit of a prejudice against works on paper for whatever reason. And work on paper will always be priced less than a work on canvas. Let me give you a little bit of an example. Years ago, I was fortunate enough to have dinner with one of my favorite artists. This artist is a very, very successful photorealist painter. I asked him a question. I have several of his monographs and he had paintings that he had made that were these exquisite works on canvas, but he also had a few watercolors on paper that were in the book. I loved both. I really hadn't seen many of the watercolors and they caught my attention. I wanted to know more. I asked him if he still made the watercolors because I noticed that there wasn't many after a certain year. And he said that unfortunately, he no longer made the watercolors. The reason is, is he put the same amount of time in making the acrylic paintings on canvas as he 
put into making the watercolors on paper. They were both exquisitely detailed, both incredibly beautiful, but in the art world, in the commercial gallery world, the watercolor on paper was priced considerably less than the paintings on canvas. So good business says, well, I make so much less on this other and I put the same amount of time in it. That does not make business sense. I should make this over here. It's the same amount of time and I make more money on it. So to explain that story a bit more, it, it does sound a little gross. You know, you're like, well, I like making the watercolors. They're beautiful. Why can't I make those? Well, you can. If you want to make them and they, they're, you enjoy it, then by all means, make them. But be aware that you're going to make less money than you will on that oil painting on canvas that you might put the same amount of time in. Okay, so let me back up a little bit. A gallery is going to price work based on the material again. So let's say you are an artist and you do watercolors on paper and you also do oil paintings. Well, your watercolors on paper are going to have their own price structure while your oil paintings will have their own price structure. The watercolors on paper, their price structure will be less than the oil paintings on canvas. So the gallery is going to start with an entry level price for the watercolors, which will be the smallest watercolors you make, and the same will be established for your oil paintings. But the entry point for your oil paintings is going to be a little higher. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, there is a certain psychology to pricing artwork as well, or pricing anything in general. You want to keep things simple for your client and your collector. You don't want to use off the wall numbers. You, you want to use round numbers that are easy to understand. Another thing that is nice about using a round number is it's easy to do the math in your head to give someone a discount if you want. Unfortunately, in the commercial art gallery world, there are a lot of discounts that are given. Now discounts can be on the small side. 10% is often given as a discount, while a museum or consultant might get a 20% discount. 20% is probably about as deep as a discount will go when it comes to a discount on a work of art at the gallery, many your work. Now, let's talk about that again in terms of the money. Your painting is going to be priced at this amount, right? And as we've discussed in a commercial art gallery, the gallery gets 50% of that. They get half of that. And the artists, obviously you, keep half of that. Now, at the time of a consignment agreement, some galleries will ask that an artist shares an up to a 10% discount. Meaning, if the painting is discounted to the collector by 10%, that the artist and the gallery will then share in that. Meaning that they both take a 5% cut on the price coming to them. So if the gallery decides to offer a collector or a museum, say 20%, they're going to be making less money on the price. Now, if they're placing your painting in a museum, that could be worth it. You might even be willing to take less of your cut to help that along. I mean, getting your painting in a permanent collection is a great thing for you and your career. Now, there's one other thing that is going to be considered in the price of a work of art at a commercial art gallery that is also going to be something that you're going to need to consider as well. That is framing. Many galleries cover the framing cost of a work of art on their own end. Some galleries require the artist to do that, but I'm just going to talk about a gallery that say does cover the cost of framing. A gallery is going to mainly look at your works of art at an unframed cost level. What I described in the beginning based on base prices, they might be looking at that in terms of an unframed cost because framing is expensive if you haven't been to a frame shop recently, 
check one out and you'll see what I mean. It's very expensive. So if you're selling something at $400, it's very possible that you're spending more on the frame than you're actually going to be making. So that is something to consider when pricing your work of art from your studio as well. So a gallery is keeping close track of their expenses and how to balance that out whenever it comes to their income. So the framing cost is an important thing. Now that we've covered commercial art galleries and the idea of how they price their artwork, let's now talk about you and your studio. So let's say that you are an emerging artist and you're entering some of your first exhibitions. You're getting out of art school. You, you're getting yourself out there. Where do you begin to price your work of art? Well, I've given you a few ideas of how gallery does it, but there's a couple things that you need to consider. When you're pricing your artwork, there's two main things, cost of your materials and the cost of your time. Cost of your materials is an easy idea to understand. Let's say you're making an oil painting on canvas. Was that canvas expensive? Did you use some of the best, most expensive professional grade oil paints available? It's things like that that you might then look at and you say, oh boy, if I really, really did the math on this, that painting would cost me like $500 to make. Framing the painting is a whole other thing, like I just mentioned with the gallery. To frame your work of art is something else that goes into the expense of that. If you enter this juried exhibition and you're so excited and someone wants to know how much this painting costs, did you frame it? Did you go to a frame shop and frame it? If so, how much did that frame cost you? That goes into the cost of your materials as well. There's also the idea of your cost of time. I know it's not easy to say, well, I spent a week making that painting versus I made two days making that painting. But this is something you need to put into your head when it comes to your initial cost. So the idea of your time put into a work of art is important, but don't get too bogged down into that because you're not going to price things based on that alone. You may spend more time on one work of art than another, but they're going to be priced the same. Again, like I mentioned with the gallery, they're going to price things all the same based on a size and size range. And that's what you need to do with your studio work. Is stay consistent. But what you need to do is come up with a base point in which you want to start your works. Much like I described with the gallery. Think about your base level and entry level. Are you an artist that's making studies right now? If not, you should. Are you an artist that is making plein air paintings, sketches out from the landscape, and then you come back to your studio and make these immaculate paintings that are larger. Your smaller plein air sketches are going to be priced less, more approachable than the larger ones. Are you a portrait painter that does beautiful figure sketches on paper or a la prima sketches on small panels and then do more exquisite, fully rendered works? those smaller sketches are going to be priced less. So come up with that base price and then go up from there based on the size and the size range. Keep a list of where certain sizes are priced and where certain materials will then go and be priced. You know, like if you're making canvas paintings or you're making works on paper, have that sort of plotted out so you can understand that. And every time you have an exhibition or you get more notoriety, your prices are going to bump a little bit more. So you're going to need to kind of increase that scale across the board. Okay, so this covers a lot and it's still, I could keep going about pricing works of art, but this is going to give you an idea of where to start pricing your works and what a gallery is going to consider when pricing a work of art. When you approach a gallery for gallery representation, they're going to want a price chart, a list of where things are priced. Or say you give them a portfolio of 12 paintings, they're going to want to know where those 12 paintings are priced. 
and you're going to want to do it like I described. So you look professional and consistent. You don't want to give them a portfolio of 12 paintings and things are all over the place just based on some random numbers that you've decided to choose based on which paintings you like best. You want to be professional and this is going to help you understand how the gallery is going to do it so you can stay informed and understand the business more. Now, in closing, I'm going to give you one more thing to consider, and this is super important. I just touched on it a few moments ago in the video, but this is something worth repeating. A gallery is going to price the works of art you give them based on size and size range. It does not matter if you like a certain work of art more or you spent more time on a work of art. If the paintings are the same size and you spent a month on one and two days on another, they're still going to be priced the same. And another thing about pricing, and this is huge, I almost forgot. You want to start small when it comes to pricing your work of art. You want to be, you want to start with a, a range that's easy to grow on because you want to grow your prices up as your career grows. You don't want to start your career here. All of us would love to make a fortune on our paintings, but you can't just jump here because the likelihood of your career starting at a high level is very unlikely. So start it and grow it because what you don't want to do is you don't ever want to have to lower your prices. You don't want to sell a painting to a collector at a certain price point and then a couple years later, that same painting, that same style, subject matter, and size is now cheaper. It's going to ruin your career. You have to stay consistent and grow it. You don't ever want to bring it down. Okay, I hope this helps. I know this was a huge topic and something that everyone had a lot of questions about. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer those. Again, if you like this video, please click the like button and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of other things like this that I want to cover going forward, so please stay tuned. With all of this knowledge in mind, you are now prepared to sell art. So go finish your paintings and let's make some money. Thank you everyone. Chris Clapp here again, and I'm in the studio editing the video that you just watched. But I realized that I missed out a huge piece of information that's big. This is going to make sure that you have a healthy relationship with any gallery that you start to build a relationship with in the future. And it will also make sure that you have a good reputation in your community. The paintings that you sell and you price out of your studio must be the same price as your paintings in a gallery. Even though you make 50% of the price when it's sold in a gallery versus a potential 100% out of your studio, the paintings must be the same in both locations. Otherwise, your gallery will think that you're undercutting them. You do not want to do that. It will give you a bad name and will make your gallery not want to work with you again. So anyway, just wanna throw this in here because we can't have a video about pricing art without covering that simple notion. Everyone, get back to work. See you soon.